going out with my lady exploring our new neighborhood. We just escaped from San Francisco rents and it's good to be back in the East Bay, under blue skies on a day without rain in a month of storms. Guard dog in the used car lot sees us walking by and runs over to the fence. He doesn't bark, has his tail between his legs and whines for us to come over. Dog eyes tell me plain as words, he's lonely, doesn't get enough to eat. Ribs are showing, dirty greasy fur neglected, beaten, crying for love. Pet him through the bars of the fence and he does his best to nuzzle my hand through solid steel. And I wonder if this is man's best friend. How does man treat his enemies? But I can't fix it. And I can't take him home with me. So I pat his head one last time and keep walking. Coming home after dinner, hours later, admiring the city lights, laughing about random trivialities, nothing important. When a frail, tired voice from the shadow says, please, can you help? Anything helps. And his hand extends a copy of Street Spirit, the local homeless paper. He is tired old man. Should be resting in front of his fireplace, telling stories to his grandchildren, teaching them about where they come from, where they're going instead. He's begging for scraps from passers-by, trying desperately to stay alive. And I can't help thinking of my own grandfathers, both of whom died this year. But at least they died at home, warm, surrounded by people who loved them. I stop and open my wallet, hand him a dollar. It's not much, but I know that if I gave a dollar to every homeless person, I would soon be homeless myself. He thanks me and points to the headline, says, This is last month's paper, but it's very important. Please read it. His voice filled with sorrow like no one, no one should ever have to carry. It's an article about a recent string of brutal murders, mostly elderly and frail homeless people, the kind that the Channel 7 News, with all its sensationalist violence, never bothers to report on. And my stomach knots up so tight I have to stop walking. And I can feel my eyes fill with tears because there's so little I can do. But somebody has to do something. Gods only know what. All I know is every time I pass by someone who needs my help and I don't help them, I can feel myself die a little bit inside. A part of my humanity torn away and my soul left as brutalized as the old woman in the article who was beaten to death by a group of young men about my age looking for, quote, something to do. And I don't know how humans can live like this, in a world like this, an economy like this, in a society like this, where survival means denying all the things that link us together, all the things that make us human, and not go as crazy as I feel right now, sitting on a fire hydrant on the street corner, choked with rage and sorrow and eyes streaming tears, unable to keep walking home. And in some perfect world, I and the old man and the dog all get to go home to someplace warm with people who love us and sleep peaceful dreams on full bellies. But this is no perfect world. And I am the only one who gets to go home tonight, someplace warm with people who love me, but I cannot sleep. I cannot bear the dreams that come, reminding me of those I've left outside in the cold. I walk the blocks back to where he still stands, waiting and give him more, more than I can afford to give, knowing I cannot afford not to. And he gives me a hug and thanks me. One absurdly small drop in one very big bucket. But I know that for him at least, a drop can make a difference as I go home and wait for the storms that must surely come.